are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Uh, a, a hateful video that sparked uh, violence in various parts of the world. Hope is making a comeback. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm proud of my country. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor. Period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. I'm Period. from a small town in Tennessee, a long way from the suits in D.C., but close enough now to see this mess. What difference at this point does it make? We're a stand, the mound's getting steeper. They grab a shovel, dig a hole a little deeper, just to bury my kids right up to there. I've got a pen, and I've got a pen. not be a political man, but when your back's against the wall, you got to rise up and take a stand. My love is true for the red, white, and blue. And that's why I fight for each and every one of our rights. And I know they stole a little bit of this country's soul. But I'm here to tell you all today, we'll take it back again. If you've been successful, you, don't, you didn't get there on your own. If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. We will take it back again. We want to thank our listeners for tuning into The Scott Adams Show. We have a great show for you today. We have an award-winning actor, Nick Mancuso, joining us on The Scott Adams Show today. We have Suzanne Stambulik. Suzanne wrote a great book for children related to faith. And we also have Steve Beeman. Steve Beeman is a radio talk show host as well as a finance guru. And we're going to get to those interviews and more in just a moment. In a world gone mad, there is an intergalactic struggle between right and wrong, good and evil. We find the truth on The Scott Adams Show. Corrupt government, evildoers, and media bias are exposed. Hold on to your seats. Buckle up for safety. You are now entering another dimension with The Scott Adams Show. Well, that's right. My name is Scott Adams, and I'm joined by Leonardo Cravota. We want to thank our listeners for tuning in to The Scott Adams Show. We have a great show today. We're going to have Nick Mancuso, an award-winning actor, on our show today. I went to IMDb to look him up, and I've seen him act before, but I needed to get a little refresher, and it said, Darkly handsome Nick Mancuso, born Nicodemo Antonio Massimo Mancuso, was born in 1956 in Malmola, Italy, but raised as a child in Canada. So he's a great actor. He's starred in some pretty great films. Yes, he's been in some interesting films, including Revelation, Tribulation, and Judgment, which are part of a the Apocalypse Trilogy. He's also well known for Stingray and also for Matrix. So he's been in a number of different films. He has also acted in multiple languages, English, French, and I believe a little bit of Italian as well, since he was actually born in Italy. Amazing. We also have a really great woman that we uh, were kind, she was kind enough to send us all of her books and sign them for us. Uh, they're children's books, and they're just so great. Her name is Suzanne Stambulik, and we love having Sam. Suzanne on the show today. We also have Steve Beeman. Steve Beeman is a real tour de force when it comes to finance and personal wealth. Yes, he's a f chartered financial economist. He's extremely well known in the financial arena. He's had some terrific insights over the years talking about the domestic and a little bit of the foreign economy as well. And he's also become a real media personality and he's starting his own radio show. So we're very excited for him. So Obama, you know, on the Drudge, they had this photograph of Obama standing with Raul Castro in Cuba. It was interesting hearing the national anthem play in Cuba. Behind in the backdrop of the photograph with these leaders was Che Cravera. Che Cravera was a murder murderous tyrant, communist. Here's our president standing right in front of that backdrop. How fitting. Yeah, absolutely. How fitting. Well, you know, there's, there are all these Che Guevara t-shirts that are floating around the country, of, you know, a bunch of teenagers and young people, and I guess probably older people are wearing them as well without having a full understanding of the history. Well, the biggest problem is that they're still creating atrocities against their people. Of course. And Obama has demanded nothing. Yeah. The, these are murderous thugs, the Castro brothers. This is another toothless deal, as we call it. Right. The Iran nuclear deal. Then you have the Iran deal. I mean, the Cuban deal. It's it's amazing what we what this president has done with regard to the 
United States leadership in the world. We are no longer feared. We're no longer respected. And we're making bad deals one after the other, as Trump would put it. Trump is the guy that everybody is saying is bad. You know, when Trump was out in Arizona, for example, and they blocked the streets, and in Chicago last week when they were uh, rioting and throwing punches, they blamed Trump and his supporters. They didn't blame the paid protesters. Yeah, the, distur- the disturbances. Right. They, they didn't blame them. They, they blamed Trump. The disruptors. Trump. They blamed Trump. You know, the RNC better step up and do the right thing. Oh, because absolutely. if this goes to a brokered convention and Donald Trump is about 50 votes away from getting it, winning it all and has hundreds of votes or delegates uh, above and beyond his competition, that's going to be a big problem. And I think it's going to create a an eternal split in the uh, Republican Party. Yeah. And, you know, this is a party that needs some healing. And then Hillary was at uh, the APAC. And and this came on the heels of CPAC. It was only a few weeks later. So, yeah, and apparently she was delivering an anti-Trump speech, as I, one might expect. Biden was given a speech, and he said that Israel needs to stop building uh, land on the Gaza Strip. And he got booed. If you look at the Iranian nuclear deal alone, that empowers Iran, who has been determined for the last 50 years to wiping Israel off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And this is a group that we have cut the world's greatest deal for Iran with. And the worst deal for the United States. And Netanyahu opposed the deal. I don't know how Hillary could possibly gain any traction while she's giving this speech, yet she's getting applause from Democrat Jewish leaders. This is just mind-boggling that these Jewish leaders would support Hillary in lockstep. Just because she's a Democrat, not because she's ever done a good thing for Israel. Yeah. It's talk is cheap. She said, we're Israel's best friend. We're going to protect Israel. But that's not what happened under her legacy as foreign, uh, our, for our foreign leader, Secretary of State. No, it definitely State. was not what happened. And it's just been a year since uh, Netanyahu was here to address Congress. And you had a whole bunch of Democrats dissing him and not showing up. Well, you know, uh, when Obama went to Cuba... Uh, Raul Castro didn't even greet him at, on the tarmac. He wow. greeted every other world leader. Talk about a disrespect. Snub. And then Raul Castro gives his lecture to America as we're the, we're the perpetrators of inhumane treatment toward people. Yet he has people sitting in jail for 20 years for basically speaking up their uh, ex- exercising their First Amendment rights. Hardly the welcome mat. But they don't have a First Amendment there, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hardly the welcome mat for um, our president. So it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of this meeting. Now, this meeting is disturbing in its nature. I, I understand the point of opening tourism, opening uh, trade with Cuba. To a certain extent, that makes sense for both countries. But what does not make sense is to get involved in a deal in which we give up every and Cuba gets everything. And as we've been saying, we've been seeing this in all the deals that have Obama's fingertips on them. So this meeting is historic, yes, it, but it better walk away with something more for our country or else it's just going to be futile. Yeah, look, I, I have no problem with you know ending the embargo and opening up trade. Agreed. With, yeah. You know, a lot of people look uh, to Nixon did that with China and look at China. They are economically strong today. Cuba has done nothing to gain this kind of respect from our leadership. Although one would argue that China really did and their atrocities toward their people either. So it's an interesting thing. We can learn from history. I think that Obama, the deal that he struck was a very weak deal. He could have gotten so much more out of Cuba. We had all the leverage and we squandered it. But you're listening to The Scott Adams Show and we'll return after these messages. Investing in bonds involves risk, including the possible loss of principal. Income may be subject to state, local or federal alternative minimum tax. When interest rates rise, prices will fall. When interest rates fall, prices will rise. I'm at a place in my life where I need investment income. That's why I invest in tax-free municipal bonds. I love the income they provide, income that's federally tax-free. At this point, that's exactly the kind of income I need. 
Tax-free municipal bonds can serve as the cornerstone for a conservative portfolio. They offer income that's tax-free. Henyon & Walsh is a leading expert in tax-free municipal bonds. We're committed to finding you the best bonds to meet your investment goals. We'll even send you our informative bond guide, absolutely free, if you call right now. 1-800-279-5279. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, consider municipal bonds. Take charge of your investments today and keep more of your hard-earned money. Call now to receive your copy of our informative bond guide. It's free, so call right now. Now, 1-800-279-5279. 1-800-279-5279. Henyon and Walsh, Inc., member of FINRA, SIPC. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control of your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problem now by calling the experts at U.S. Tax Shield and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, so call now. 800- 800-380-2906. That's 800-380-2906. U.S. Tax Shield. 800-380-2906. Do you use Viagra or Cialis? Have you been thinking about trying Viagra or Cialis? What if we could promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 a pill for Viagra, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pill delivers the exact same results for less than $3. We'll do the math for you. You save more than $16 a pill for the same results. Want more? We'll give you 40 blue pills or 40 yellow pills for $99 and add four more pills free. You save more than $500. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know what to do next. You need to call 800-814-5188 and get your 44 pills for just $99. Stop overpaying for Viagra. Call us and start saving a ton of money for the exact same results. Ordering is fast and easy with your pills delivered to your door in an unmarked package. Call us right now, 800-814-5188, 800-814-5188, that's 800-814-5188. Hold on to your seats, buckle up for safety, you are now entering another dimension with the Scott Adams Show. Our guests today are award-winning actor Nick Mancuso and Dr. Eldon Dahl, a naturopathic doctor and the founder of Life Choice, located on the internet at lifechoice.net. Mr. Mancuso and Dr. Dahl are to discuss toxicity and conventional medicine. They both have unique stories which have led them towards naturopathic medicine treatment protocols. Welcome to the Scott Adams Show, Nick and Dr. Dahl. So, so, so we'll start off with Nick Mancuso, and you can tell us a little bit about your background, how you met Dr. Dull, and maybe Dr. Dull, you could tell us a little bit about your background and how we all got to this interview today to talk about this important area of medicine. Sure. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that sounds good. I mean, I've known Dr. Dull now for a number of years. As you probably know, uh, we uh, I've been in the business about 40 years, and I got into this element of medicine because of the fact that about 40 years ago I was exposed to massive toxic exposure in an abandoned warehouse that we had converted into a theater and it turned out to be one of those hidden sites or those hidden dumps of the original group of actors and people. Um, uh, there are about 40 of us, so 36 are dead, uh, having been exposed. And um, I got quite ill in my early 20s because of that exposure and that got me into uh, naturopathic, orthomolecular, uh, homeopathic, and so-called alternative uh, methods of healing. And I've been, uh, because, of, because of this exposure, became severely diabetic and then started having all kinds of other problems as well. So I've been dealing with it, and then Dr. Dahl came into my life, fortunately. He has a company called Life Choice, which is, uh, produces some of the finest uh, uh, naturopathic and uh, nutraceuticals uh, in, in the in quality uh, material, and and uh, it's helped me a great deal, and and uh, so we're sort of engaged in the process of healing. Uh, wouldn't you say, Alden? Yep, I would say that uh, that sums it up. We uh, we met at a at a trade show in Toronto, and it came to me almost. Uh, 
uh, by by like a dream. Uh, I I had a, a vision of Nick the night before that I was to come up to him and introduce myself and ask him how much he wanted to become well. And uh, <laughs> you know, not knowing the man before, and here's this uh, this actor, and so I I followed my gut and. Sure enough, I went up and introduced myself to Nick and told him what I experienced, and uh, that hit off our relationship. Because um, I, I, I said, you know, I don't know why, but if if I came to you with this in, in a vision, then I believe that I have something that I can help you with. And we went through the journey of elimination of things he was on, and incorporation of, of diet and uh, some, some very important nutraceuticals of the pharmaceutical grade uh, to really start to work with his body and to, uh, to have him in a healing mode. There was healing crisis, of course, happens when you start to wean off uh, the drugs and uh, start realizing that some of these drugs are, are, are being taken at the same time and they're competing and what they're causing is one to go into depression and one to go into other states that Nick would be better off to give you first hand approach what the drug approach does. Uh, I just know what it does into the body and how they compete and, and cause uh, the whole system to go into, uh, into a spiral, a downward spiral and it's a, it's a real abyss where people are felt, feel, uh, totally lost because uh, what they're taking as a conventional medicine is putting them into the hole, and the more that they, they take, the less effective they come, and they have to take stronger medication. And, and it's, uh, it's not uncommon for, for people to be on 8 to 10 different drugs at the same time, and they compete in the body. That's a good point, Dr. Dahl. Now, Nick, uh, maybe you can pick up with what Dr. Dahl said and tell us about your firsthand approach to how well, you started you know, this. To me, Dr. Dahl is very much a hero of healing, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you know his background. He has been attacked in the past by, by SWAT teams uh, from Health Canada for, uh, for supplying uh, his patients with, uh, healing or, uh, with healing, basically. Um, and I got to know him because I had become a spokesman for Natural Health Freedom Canada at the time. I was doing a show called Power Health Radio because I got into all this because of my many problems. I got into, I became severely diabetic uh, because of the exposure uh, and then developed uh, heart disease and all kinds of other problems. I was put on the standard drugs and um, uh, for diabetics, and uh, uh, which are known as glyburides, and I was, had a heart attack, and I began to do research mm. Mm. on my own. My background is somewhat scientific, not 100%, but, um, you know, I, uh, I've been an actor 40 years, but uh, I studied uh, in university to be, um, uh, a psychologist, and, and I've always had a, a kind of scientific approach to it. So I, I discovered that the various drugs that we've been putting out there uh, would cause um, the, the enzymatic action um, of oxygen from bonding with the heart muscle. University of Miami studies in the mid-70s, and yet they keep prescribing these drugs that will kill people, particularly diabetics. Type 2 diabetics, their number one killer is heart attacks and insulin-dependent diabetics I have more or less have the same heart attack deaths. It is a direct consequence of these particular drugs. So that opened the door for me to start uh, looking into alternative methods. But I've been into alternative methods since my early 20s when I was first exposed. I got into homeopathy and Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and so forth. But like I said, of that initial group, you know, uh, 36 are dead of the 40. Mm-hmm. And I, in my mind, I'm 68 now. I'm still alive because of this particular approach. So Dr. Dahl and I started working together. And really what I want to do is get the message out there that there is healing, but it has to be done very specifically. And uh, the first step is to educate ourselves. And unfortunately, most of us, you know, by the time we get sick, it's too late. You know, we, uh, we're, we're just not ready for it. So we end up on a massive array of drugs by the time the average 60-year-old um, uh, is on about like eight to ten drugs in Europe and so forth. The side effects and the spiral that Dr. Dahl talks about, which is an abyss, which is a downward spiral. I can tell you from personal experiences a vast difference between the kind of healing that takes place from a natural, the way nature intended it, and and unfortunately this profit-driven uh, system that is in place now that uh, is uh, turning life, in my mind, uh, to, into hell. And as you get older, you discover that. You don't know that when you're young, you're in your 30s, 40s, 
But when you start getting into your 60s and you've been exposed uh, to all the massive toxins that are around us, which are the central cause of our diseases along with lack of proper nutrition, you know, um, then you discover it. But by then, it's too late. So we're hoping to tr- get the word out there, basically, and that's why Dr. Dahl and I started doing this. How, how can we help you get the word out there? I mean, because, you know, when I heard that statistics, when you told me about the people that were in the theater with you, the warehouse theater with you, that 36 out of 40 are gone now, that is such a startling statistic and such a tragic statistic. And the fact that you've been able to find a journey for yourself towards better health, how can we share this with more people? What do people need to be aware of? What are some are there easy lessons that we can teach them, simple lessons? Dr. Bell, what do you say? Well, I'd say it has to come back to the basics. We have to work in a preventative way. And I think for the average person, it's overwhelming. When they walk into a, like a health store, it's just a sea of vitamins, and they get confused. The people that are working behind the counter, a lot of them are students. They don't know what they're doing, and yet the people that come into the stores give them like they're an authority. And take what they say, and that, that's that's uh, that's a sad scenario. That's a whole program well, on itself. And then we we have to be careful about the internet, right? I mean, a lot of people self medicate. You know, a lot of individuals, their doctor becomes WebMD, and that's not always a good idea either. Oh no, no, no! And then, and then of course, there's the quality issue. I mean, they, they're selling vitamins in the dollar store. What, what we're finding is that the quality of uh, vitamin. I'll give you a little brief example here. There, there's three forms. There's uh, the USP pharmaceutical grade, which is the highest grade in the world. That's the standard, the gold bar that every pharmaceutical company and and uh, uh, vitamin uh, nutraceutical company should attain to. Uh, and it's 97.7 plus in purity. Everything's covered, so you know that you have quality. Then there is the, the, the food grade, and they're the ones that we they substitute or add into the food, like folic acid and bread and this nature. That, that's food grade. Then there is called feed grade, and this is what we give to animals and livestock. Probably 80% of the vitamins in the market today are being produced with feed grade material. A lot more additives, not pure, come from China. Additives, we are not sure if they're GMO or not. They, they say that they're organic, but when you, you, when you read the Kessler report that was stand in front of the European Commission, you see that it, it, it's falsified that data. I've been to the trade shows. I went there, and I see the raw materials. I speak to the, uh, the representatives from China. Sixty to 80 percent are from China. And when I ask them for raw materials of the specifications I'm looking for, they tell me I can give you the paperwork. I said, well, I don't want the paperwork. I want the raw materials to match what I'm asking for. And he says, we can give you the paperwork, and he winks. And so this tells me that they are, that there's, uh, there's no transparency, and I don't trust them. So we source our raw materials globally. We, we eliminate that. We use USP pharmaceutical grade. And this is where the consumer really has to read their labels. When they walk in and they're taking anything that's a, that's a vitamin or a nutraceutical, they have to read their labels. And don't buy on price point. And so, you so, have to go back to your diet. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Diet is important. You know, well, uh, you've major. been you've been researching this for the last thirty years, and you know, if you go to the website lifechoice.net. Again, that's lifechoice.net. We can see a couple of things that appeal to me, that the manufacturing of this product is animal cruelty-free, which is so important to us, and it's made with non-GMO ingredients. Uh, Your product is is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. You're legit. And that's, I think, what we're trying to get at, is that not all health remedies are the same. Oh, no. And so, <laughs> no, yeah. no, that's why yeah, the, that's so the attorney general, the New York attorney general, found the mistakes he did in the in the supplements that was on, was written on the label was not in the bottle. Well, we want to remind our listeners that we're speaking with Nick Mancuso, actor and someone who has actually benefited from your product, Life Choice, and we're also speaking with Doctor Dull. Dull, yes. Oh. And, and the thing is, uh, Nick, Nick. Uh, I, I developed a, a product called Neurotransmitter Support. This is for the aging brain. And Nick, Nick had amazing results with that. Just to fill in is that, you know, I'm now 68, and with diabetes, uh, you get something called uh, type 3 diabetes eventually, which can become Alzheimer's uh, because the entire system, diabetes, is a, is a corrosive illness. 
it affects every element of the body. And I noticed a few years ago that my memory was starting to go. I'm highly dependent on memory. I, you know, I've done almost 300 films and plays, and you know, I, I've done shows that are as long as an hour and 20 minutes. And I've always had a very, very strong memory. Well, a couple of years ago, and it's kind of a, I guess, a funny thing, but I, I kept forgetting the espresso pot. I kept burning the espresso because I like to make espresso in the morning, mm -hmm. and I kept uh, getting it on the stove. Hmm. And oh, wow. the first time it happened, you know, I thought, oh, well, you know, and then it happened again a couple of weeks later, and then it happened again, and I finally ended up melting it, almost set fire to the kitchen, and I went, wait a minute, something is seriously wrong here. I'm forgetting things, and so I contacted Dr. Dolly, gave me this product called Neurotransmitter, and I got to tell you, Within five days, my memory was restored, my attention span, my concentration, and I use that because I'm also a writer. And uh, it's made an immense difference in that particular area. So the point is that healing is out there, but you have to have knowledge, right? And, that, and that's what this story is about, right? Trying to get the knowledge out there, the information out there. Alzheimer, uh, Alzheimer's is, is becoming epidemic, uh, Dr. Dahl. Oh, sure it is. Absolutely. About that. Now, the best place to go to find out more information is lifechoice.net. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. Again, we want to thank Dr. Eldon Dahl and Mr. Nick Mancuso for joining us today to talk about this great remedy. And uh, we want to thank you for hanging out with the Scott Adams Show today. Well, thank, thank you, you Scott. My pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye now. Pleasure. And with that, you're listening to the Scott Adams Show, and we'll return after these messages. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Are you over the age of 60 and been diagnosed with lung cancer? If so, you and your family may qualify for a cash award. Our experienced attorneys are standing by to evaluate whether you have a lung cancer claim that qualifies you for a cash award. The consultation is absolutely free, and there is no risk and no money out of pocket. We only receive a fee when we secure you and your family a settlement. 250,000 people are diagnosed with lung cancer every year. You're not alone in this battle. We can help make sure that you and your family are financially safe and that medical expenses are covered. Again, if you've been diagnosed with lung cancer and are over age 60, call now. Don't delay. There are deadlines for filing claims. We're standing by 24-7. Call us at 1-800-963-6250. 1-800-963-6250. Again, that's 1-800-963-6250. Attorney Advertising. William Stepacker Jr. is the attorney responsible for this ad. Main office, Grant, Pennsylvania. May not be available in all states. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-830-0791. 800-830-0791. 800-830-0791. Have you ever been turned down, rejected, or downright denied because of bad credit? Don't let your dreams disappear. We here at Parkview Credit can help you qualify for that new car you've been dreaming about or that new home you know you deserve. Never again be rejected because of bad credit. Just call us here at Parkview Credit today and see how much we can help boost your credit score. We've helped thousands repair their credit so they could finally start qualifying for the purchases they've been dreaming about. Stop being held back from getting the things you want. We help rebuild your credit score so you can qualify for the home, car, or credit card you deserve. No matter how bad your credit is, just call 1-800-257-7696 today to see how much we could help your credit score. No one is turned away. Call now, 1-800-257-7696. 
That's 1-800-257-7696. Again, 1-800-257-7696. Are you struggling with addiction or alcohol problems? If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help, and your insurance may offer coverage. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-518-1573. 800-518-1573. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Call now for hope and help with proven, gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I'm in recovery, getting the help. I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-518-1573. 800-518-1573. We find the truth on The Scott Adams Show. Hold on to your seats. Buckle up for safety. You are now entering another dimension. We'd like to welcome to The Scott Adams Show, Steve Beeman. Mr. Beeman is a chartered economist and author He is the president of SAFE, the Society to Advance Financial Education. He is also the host of the Steve Beeman Show, which will soon start airing on WIND, AM 560, The Answer in Chicago. Welcome to the Scott Adams Show, Steve. Well, Scott, it's a pleasure to be on. I'm honored to be on with you and the folks from Bugle Call. I know you're doing the great work that people need to hear. Yeah, we brought you on to talk about some of the things you're doing. One of the programs that you're spearheading is building a nation of millionaires. Well, exactly. I spent 30 years of my life in financial services, and I watched how people make money. And I, in fact, made a fair amount of money in financial services. And so coming out of the debacle of 2008 and nine, I started dreaming about how I could help change people's financial course. And so I thought about being an investment advisor, going to be a broker. And those things just didn't sit well with me as I realized the core problem with people not becoming wealthy in this country isn't their money, it's their lack of knowledge. So I established the society to advance financial education as a 501c3 and set out on a mission to create 75,000 millionaires in this country through the use of advanced financial knowledge that we can teach ranging from everything from how a bank really works up to how to day trade. Well, you know, the thing is, they say that if you give a man a piece of fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And by providing financial education, which sounds so complicated to people, by breaking it down and making it simple for people, you empower them. You empower them to look at what's happening to them on a daily basis in their wallets, in their purchasing power, and also in terms of uh, what they make uh, decisions about in future investments. You are exactly right. And so rather than going out with the society trying to give specific advice, to someone on should they buy this asset or this investment. What we do is educate them about the issues underlying those investments and assets so they can make their own much better decision. Exactly. Because, you know, I've also spent a little bit of time in the financial services industry. And one of the things that I found was that people don't understand finances. And I'm not talking about the uneducated people. I'm talking about sometimes people with MBAs and PhDs don't necessarily understand finances. And when they're making decisions, they don't have all the tools at their disposal. So I think it's a critical function to be bringing financial tools to individuals where it teaches them the basics of managing, uh, they used to call it a checkbook, but an online account, teaching basic inputs and outputs, how to plan for your future, how to make investments, when's the right time in your life that you should be taking more risks, etc. And, you know, and how to look at a broader suite of options that they're that you're not limited to the the handful of things that seem to be getting thrown in front of you that there that you have the power to negotiate. Oh, you are so dead on. And in effect, one of the concerns I have with people is not only do they not understand how to build their wealth, but as a result of that, they become subject to the charlatans out there who try to sell the get rich quick schemes. And we fight long and hard against quick programs that say, gee, come to us. We'll double your money in a day. It just doesn't happen. Building wealth is a slow process of knowledge, discipline, and hard work, no matter how you do it. And so we walk with our members down their life path journey and try to help them really understand and maximize their benefit from the knowledge we can provide. The get-rich-quick schemes, 
They don't always work. When you think about pro athletes, they got rich quick. And we see how far some of them drop because they didn't have an effective financial plan. Well, we actually have a board member who is outside of financial services. On, on the society's board sits a professional musician. And he joined us because of what you just said, although translated into the entertainer world. Lots of these people make lots and lots of money. And then they turn it over to a Wall Street advisor. And lo and behold, they end up losing their money. So we're hoping we can help people avoid those real pitfalls in life. So the program that you're spearheading is Building a Nation of Millionaires. We also want to talk about a recent article that you wrote entitled Keys to Understanding America's Trade Deficit. Yeah, let me touch on that. As part of the society, I publish an awful lot of stuff. I publish educational libraries as well as contemporary issues. And this idea of the trade deficit has come up within the presidential campaign that we're witnessing. And I thought it would be nice to put into simpler terms the clarification of what drives a trade deficit in it kind of in opposition to some of the talk that we're hearing in the campaigns that I think is a little bit not disingenuous, but extremely simplistic. I imagine you're going to tell us that there's not too much truth to what Trump is talking about with regard to negotiating poor deals, or is Trump right? I think he's half right. And let me tell you, I think that people need to understand when it comes to a trade deficit, and that means that we buy more of their products than they buy of ours. Part of the driver, in fact, the biggest driver for that is just simply the fact that we're the biggest economy. We have far and away the largest consumer economy on the planet. So it is a natural course of events that we would buy more of their goods than they would buy of ours. When we have all the consumers, we buy all the product. But secondly, in addition to that, you do have a circumstance in the United States today in which regulation and taxation is forcing corporations to go overseas. That is a real thing. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the world. We have companies sitting on trillions of dollars of wealth that they can't repatriate without double taxation. So that regulatory and tax environment is a second driver to that. It's only when you get down around the third or fourth issue that you get into the currency manipulation that some countries do. It's a real issue, but it's certainly not the big driving issue. Explain for our audience what currency manipulation is what like we hear china's doing it we hear mexico's doing it tell us a little bit more about what currency manipulation is yeah this is one of those wall street things that sounds really complicated but it's really not the u.s dollar is valued relative to other currencies and so in a very simple context when the dollar is worth more than the chinese currency it costs our consumers more to sell product into china in other words the chinese buyer can't get as much of our goods because their currency is not worth as much. So currency has a double edge to it. When you have a powerful dollar, you can't sell as much into the other guy, but buying his goods is a lot cheaper. Also, trade policy has a huge impact on immigration. Well, there's clearly, as we, we try to lift up the globe's economy, it will cause people not to want to migrate as they do. Most of their much, I won't say most, but much of the migration that takes place around the world is from the underdeveloped economies to the developed economies because people are looking for jobs. But that was something I touched on in that article in that today, if you look at labor rates in India, it's about $1.50 an hour versus the U.S. where it's almost $40 an hour. Now, the reason we can compete even with that much, much higher labor rate is that we have very advanced productivity and developmental skills vis-a-vis the Indian economy. As the world moves more to a technological economy, what we're going to see is those low-end jobs go away and they're replaced by robotics. We in America will see more value to our work because our biggest export now is managerial skill, believe it or not. And so we become part of a technical economy where those other countries really are going to have big problems keeping their people employed. Yeah, there has been a trend of exporting our lower income jobs and switching them with higher income jobs. And that that hasn't always worked out too well. And I think that part of the incentive to that was to help support and finance programs like Social Security. Uh, There's no question. But let me touch on this, and I wish we had all day to talk, because one of the dilemmas we're running into with the political um, class that's, you know, talking today, or even some of the business people, they're looking in the rearview mirror at economic structures that have worked in a certain way in the past. The problem is you cannot bring a 20th century economic model into a 21st century economy. And the economy the globe is entering right now is much, much different than ever has existed. 
we're looking at a, a world of economics in which 10% of the people own assets, 10% of the people innovate on those to determine new ways to use them, 10 or 20% run the businesses and the vehicles to get those knowledge bases out. The other people aren't going to be needed like before. We won't need cab drivers. We won't need you know, the laborers that we've needed in the past. And that's a change in economic structures that's real, but it's a brand new world in that regard. And finally, we wanted to touch upon your philosophical path to wealth. You uh, wrote something about five paths to a transformed life, one of which you mentioned in a video that we saw online entitled The Emotional Path. Uh, Can you get into that a little bit? Yeah, let me touch on this. I think this is fun. I I have six children, and I I sadly went through a divorce in 2008, and there are no winners in that process. Let me tell you, if there's nuclear war, that's it. (laughs) But coming out of that, I wanted to talk to my kids about their lives. So I had for a long time talked to them about what I called four legs to the stool, where you have certainly your physical health, but you also have your emotional wellness, your spiritual purpose, and your intellectual understanding playing together to create a whole person. Now, I I added the fifth leg, if you will, which is financial to adults, because oftentimes a person with a bad financial journey can take down the others. But the emotional path becomes one of having empathy and understanding and a clear um, a value-based system in your life. And I thought it was extremely important to put that information out there. It's not just positive mental attitude, but it's a holistic emotional view of the world with built-in neuro-linguistic programming and other things to help people get a better attitude about life. You know, I've kind of embraced the minimalist approach to to living in the sense that, uh, you know, you ever see the movie Up in the Air with George Clooney, and he talks, about, he talks about the backpack and all the things we acquire in our life that are kind of dragging us down, weighing us down, and just you know take these things that are not important in our life out of the backpack and put them aside and mobilize your life. And, you know, so these kinds of philosophies, I think, really can impact uh, personal wealth. Oh, I I think there's no question. When I look at wealthy people I know, and I'll carve out two or three of them who really were in it for the money, but for the most part, the people I know that are wealthy have done it by doing all of those other four things. They have emotional, intellectual, physical, and spiritual health and purpose. That then drives the financial path rather than the other way around. And so finance becomes an outcome of life, not a goal of life. No, absolutely, because you've got to start by an intrinsic motivation. You've got to start by focused on being positive, but not being positive just for the sake of being positive, being positive towards a goal. Dead on, dead on. And we, I've written articles about the drawbacks to positive thinking, and it's partly because of that. A positive thinking mindset is you get ramped up over a weekend seminar and you feel great about yourself, but when you come back Monday morning, you don't do anything in your life. I've often said to people that knowledge is power, but knowledge put into action is superpower. Hmm. And so as people understand the depth of the emotional issues they face in life, whether it's grief, excitement, you know, you could go down that histogram of all those different emotional issues. But as we get those put into place and can convert some of it to an intellectual understanding, we find that really life does smooth out and people can handle much, much more. We want to remind our listeners that we've been speaking with Steve Beeman. Steve Beeman is a chartered economist and author. He is the president of SAFE, the Society Advanced Financial Education. He's also the host of the Steve Beeman Show, which will soon start airing on WIND AM 560, The Answer in Chicago. Once again, Steve, thank you for hanging out with the Scott Adams Show, sharing all your great wisdom with our listeners. We really appreciate it. Well, I thank the two of you for having me on, and I wish you Godspeed in spreading the message that you were spreading. Well said. Thank you. Bye-bye now. And with that, you're listening to The Scott Adams Show, and we'll return after these messages. If you've got joint pain, let me ask you a question. Would you like a high-quality knee, back, shoulder, or ankle brace at little or no cost? Now, just in case your reception isn't great, let me ask you again. Would you like a pain-relieving knee, back, shoulder, or ankle brace at little or no cost? 
Well, if you have Medicare insurance, you could qualify for these pain-relieving braces at little or no cost. And these are high-quality braces. They are very comfortable, and they've helped thousands relieve their pain. Now, I'd like you to imagine going on vacation, playing with your grandkids, just living your life again without pain. The Mobility Hotline is a referral service that connects folks with Medicare coverage and other insurance to accredited companies offering pain-relieving braces at little or no cost. And don't you worry about the Medicare paperwork. They'll handle it all for you. And they'll deliver your braces for free. Call the Mobility Hotline now. The call's free. 1-800-557-6150. 1-800-557-6150. 1-800-557-6150. I've owned my company for 14 years now, and I can tell you that payroll is a four-letter word. I hate doing it. It eats up hours I don't have, and it costs me money I could be saving. But my accountant's too expensive, and I'm not sure who to call. But I know I need help. We're Paychex, and we take all the hassles out of small business payroll. We save you time and money. It's easy. Call, fax, or give us your payroll information securely online and we take care of the rest. We calculate the correct taxes, manage payments and direct deposits. We even send out your checks. Payroll doesn't need to be a four-letter word anymore. We're so sure that we can save you time and money that we'll give you a month's payroll free. Just for calling 877-663-3830. Get one month's payroll for free. Call Paychex right now. 877-663-3830. That's 877-663-3830. Investing in bonds involves risk, including the possible loss of principal. Income may be subject to state, local, or federal alternative minimum tax. When interest rates rise, prices will fall. When interest rates fall, prices will rise. I'm at a place in my life where I need investment income. That's why I invest in tax-free municipal bonds. I love the income they provide. Income that's federally tax-free. At this point, that's exactly the kind of income I need. Tax-free municipal bonds can serve as the cornerstone for a conservative portfolio. They offer income that's tax-free. Henyon & Walsh is a leading expert in tax-free municipal bonds. We're committed to finding you the best bonds to meet your investment goals. We'll even send you our informative bond guide absolutely free if you call right now. 1-800-279-5279. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, consider municipal bonds. Take charge of your investments today and keep more of your hard-earned money. Call now to receive your copy of our informative bond guide. It's free, so call right now 1-800-279-5279 1-800-279-5279 Henyon and Walsh Inc., member of FINRA SIPC individuals and businesses with tax problems listen carefully do you feel like you're losing control of your finances if you owe over ten thousand dollars in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns we can help you take back control the IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world and they can seize your bank accounts garnish your paycheck close your business and file credit criminal charges. Take control of your tax problem now by calling the experts at U.S. Tax Shield and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, so call now. 800-380-2906. That's 800-380-2906. U.S. Tax Shield. 800-380-2906. Hold on to your seats. Buckle up for safety. You are now entering another dimension with the Scott Adams Show. We'd like to welcome to the Scott Adams Show, Suzanne Stambulia, author of the book A to Z with the One True King. Welcome to the Scott Adams Show, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. So your book is a children's book. It's a lovely book, great illustrations. It's faith-based. Can you tell us what inspired you to write this book? Well, thank you. Um, I think it turned out well, and I'm, I'm pleased with the product. But what inspired me to write it is that prior to being an author, I worked as a marriage and family therapist. Hmm. During, during that course of time, I saw firsthand how Outside influences greatly impact our minds, thoughts, beliefs, and actions. So once we had our daughter, it kind of shaped and affected how we chose to raise her. You know, as a stay-at-home mom, I read a ton to my daughter. And when I'm out purchasing books, I'll always try to scan them, you know, to see if it's something that we might like. But often when we would come home and it would come time to read the book, I would realize that they just weren't suitable for her. 
while they were bestsellers or very popular, you know, in my opinion, they contained inappropriate words. Of course, I know as a mom, I'd have to uh, correct her at some point for saying them, but I just didn't want to feed them to her. You know, my husband and I, we always try to look for books that contain, you know, godly principles and instill good character qualities for her to learn. But we also want it to be enjoyable, and we never really could find books. I mean, there were a few, but we had trouble finding books that had that wholesome message that we wanted to teach her. So after expressing my frustration to my husband, he just, you know, he's a very matter-of-fact person, and he said, why don't you just do something about it, write one yourself? And so that's what I did, and that's kind of how everything got started. Well, you know, Suzanne, uh, we neglected to mention the name of your publishing company, which is named after your daughter, isn't it? Scarlet Gray Publishing. Yes, ma'am, it is. Um, I founded my own Scarlet Gray Publishing Company, which is named after my daughter. And, um, you know, we really want to be that safe brand for parents. We know parents are going to purchase books and, you know, scan them just like parents should to see if it's a good fit for what they're looking for. But um, all of our books are going to be based or centered on God's Word, and we really hope that uh, parents can share our books confidently with their children, knowing that the message in the books meets their high standards. We we ultimately really want um, young readers to follow our characters through age-appropriate mistakes, and that's kind of where we're a little different than other books. We want everything to be kind of age-appropriate, and uh, we want to provide our young readers with the big picture in life and kind of ultimately put the focus on God and help them to see how they can live their daily lives and honor Him with their choices. I would imagine that your background in psychology uh, lent itself very well to writing this book. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I, I think so. I mean, you know... In my I, course of time of, as working as a therapist, I literally saw everything. I mean, you think of something where someone's seeking help, and I saw it. I mean, I saw everything. My very If this gives you any indication, my very first client that I ever saw was a lady who was participating with her husband in the swinging lifestyle. So I literally saw everything across the board, and it didn't matter what age the the people were, the individuals were. I mean, it's still kind of pointing back to the fact that um, what you expose yourself to on the outside often, you know, affects your heart, you know, the core of who you are, and you have to control your outside surroundings. And and not to suggest that you can um, protect your child from everything, you know, um, you know, they are going to be exposed to negative things, but... Reading God's Word or Christian-based material at home really sets that firm foundation so when they're outside of the home, they're able to exercise discernment and better understand how they're supposed to behave, how they're supposed to act, and um, it really just affects them as a whole. So, Suzanne, in terms of the age range for your books, because I know that A to Z uh, with the One True King is not your only book. Do you have a, right. do you have a particular age range that you're currently covering? Well, um, the, 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 my first book, Scarlet Gray Joins the Parade, I would say it's probably you know it's a short chapter book for early readers. So I'd say maybe five to eight. Some parents read it to their children, and some children read it on their own. The alphabet book, I mean, A to Z with the One True King, you can introduce it very early. You know, it's just a picture book. But then, um, you know, if you have like an older child that you might want to read to your younger child, say you have a child that's maybe seven or eight that absolutely knows their alphabet, you know, they could read it to the child that's four. And the cool thing about that is the children are going to learn without even realizing it. The children are intrigued by the colorful illustrations and the parents are happy because they're learning God's Word. And it's kind of funny that you say that because um, I had a lady email me the other day, and she had gotten the book, and, you know, she's an adult with a child. And she said, you know what, I've just really strayed from God. I want to get my life back on track. And she said, I hope to read this and learn with my child. And I thought that was so cool because, you know, my daughter is four years old, and I've been a Christian my whole life. I've been in church, of course. 
But my faith has truly grown in the last four years because it's something about that bite-sized information. You know, the Bible can be so intimidating and confusing at times, and, it, you know, it's just difficult, you know. And so um, my point in this is that everyone's going to learn. Yes, it is probably for, you know, kids maybe the A to Z with one true king is for young kids to maybe seven, you know. But it's really going to impact the whole family. <clears throat> You know, uh, under the letter I, because your book is A through Z and you capture all these different letters, it references my favorite scripture, which is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. And in it, you have a picture of a, a boy lifting weights. And it said, my st- on the wall, it says, my strength training plan. Number one, eat healthy. Number two, exercise. And number three, plenty of sleep. And, you know, it reminds me, uh, I, I happen to be a, a big res- collegiate wrestling fan. And one of my mm-hmm. favorite teams is Penn- the Penn State Nittany Lion wrestling team. And their, their uh, lightest wa- weight, 125-pounder, is Nico Megalutis. And he actually got a tattoo of Philippians 4.13 and on his Twitter as well that he totally buys into that. And the whole team itself buys into the whole word gratitude. And it's just Mm -hmm. all about, you know, being blessed in gratitude. And that's such a powerful statement, Philippians 4.13. That's the one that Mm -hmm. resonates Mm -hmm. to me so well. Well, That's so cool. When you said gratitude, it made me think uh, real quick, if I can say this. You know, it's funny because... Um, so many people are buying the book that wouldn't necessarily, I guess, identify themselves as like really religious people per se. But I think it's because so many people are tired of how things are changing. You know, our world's changing. Um, it's it's not the world that it once was. You know, um, that's that, that's really surprised me because. Um, you know, our moral compass is just kind of off, so to speak. So people that necessarily wouldn't identify themselves as really religious people are purchasing it because they would like to introduce books with the positive message, those core traditional conservative values, like honor your father and mother to their child and grandchild, you know, those values that the older generations were raised on. And when you said gratitude, it made me think, you know, um, I tended, I have, plans to do a book on gratitude. You know, that's something that we're taught in the Bible, to be grateful. And today, now, so many people just feel entitled, you know, which is the opposite of gratitude. So, um, anyways, when you said gratitude, it kind of popped in my head. I wanted to share that. Well, thank that's you for that. one of the reasons that people are purchasing the book, I think, is because they identify with those conservative traditional values like gratitude. Well, you know, and, and at the same time, we're seeing these things disappear from our schools. And so books mm-hmm. like this, I think, are really important because this message isn't getting out the way it once did when uh, we had prayer in schools or we said the Pledge of Allegiance or we had the Ten Commandments on the wall. Those things are vanishing before our eyes, thanks in large part to groups like the ACLU and whoever else. But we really need these messages to surround us and we need to be able to embrace these messages and be mindful and reminded that these are important messages. I think that's why a lot of people go to church. They just really need to be reminded of what is truly important. I agree with everything that you said and you know, it is why books like this are important to do at home, but also one of the cool things about this is that it's all in one book. You know, you have 26 verses right there at your fingertips, so it's very convenient for today when parents are spread so thin and working so hard and kind of trying to balance it all, you know, if you're going to read a book, you might as well read a book with a good positive message, something that helps shape good character in your child. Speaking of a good positive message, I love num- I love N. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see. And it's got a great illustration with a girl on a bike with her father. I love that positive message that you can do it. There are so many uh, great messages in this book. By the way, Suzanne, you know, the wrestler that I referred to with the Philippians 4.13 is also Greek. Uh his name is Nico Megalotis, right? So it's interesting. Uh, we want to remind, that is cool. We want to remind our listeners that uh, we're speaking with Suzanne Stambulia, author of the book A to Z with the One True King. We want to thank you for spending some time with the Scott Adams Show and sharing some of your great messages and this wonderful book of yours. And we hope to have you back on the Scott Adams Show again real soon. 
Thank you very much. It was an honor to be here. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Bye-bye now. And with that, my name is Scott Adams. My name is Leonora Cavetta. And this is The Scott Adams Show. So hang on to your seats and hold on to your hats. We're going to take it back again with Kyle Tucker. And we'll see you next time on the radio. Town in Tennessee, a long way from the suits in DC, but close enough now to see this mess. Where I stand, the mound's getting steeper. They grab a shovel, dig the hole a little deeper, just to bury my kids right up to their necks. I might not be a political man, but when your back's against the wall, you gotta rise up and take a stand. My love. It's true for the red, white, and blue, and that's why I fight for each and every one of our rights. And I know they stole a little bit of this country's soul, but I'm here to tell you all today we'll take it back again. After years of being in a prison, our forefathers they had a vision. Free nation under God. Now those dreams they are forsaken by people living off the money I'm making. Get a job or get out, cause now this all stops.